and gentlemen, and welcome to another Krebs Coho 2.602 replay cast. Now, if you guys have been following all the news, and I'm very sure all of you have been, 2.602 is released. I'm sure you all know that. Maybe not the people that don't have this game, but then again, I believe almost all of you people must have this game. That is why you guys are watching these replays. So anyway guys, this is going to be the first replay. Apparently game replays is acting a bit funny right now and um, I can't really go on and pick any games. So actually I got one of my own games that I was uh, playing with Ryan yesterday and you know we've just, um, it's not an absolute serious game. It's not the one of the best ones but then again I think it's sort of a good one to, uh, to sort of uh, talk about any new points that have come out in 2.602. So anyway, this is a friendly match. I know that in the last friendly match that me and Ryan had, he got absolutely obliterated and <laughs> I know it was kind of brutal, but then again, Ryan is a very, very good player. We were actually playing loads of times yesterday and he actually whooped my uh, bottom <laughs> quite a number of times and funnily enough, he actually won more times than I did and so this is just a... a replay. I won't actually spoil it for you guys telling who wins this one, but um, it's sort of interesting. And I'll just be talking about some of the new balance changes. He is playing as PE and I'm playing as the American. So kind of unusual for me because I'm usually a Vermont fanboy. But you know, I'll play any faction. I really want to get into the other ones as well. Um, anyway, so let's talk about some news on the uh, channel. Um, if you guys haven't noticed, the, this, uh, these replays aren't actually played at the highest settings possible <laughs> and now that's sort of funny you would sort of expect that a, a replay commentator would have the highest settings but unfortunately I don't know I think there must be some sort of bottlenecking happening happening with my graphics card or something it's definitely not my uh, processor because my processor is very strong I believe it's an AMD Phenom 965 something like that and I've got two a crossfire of HD 5770 and now those are getting quite outdated and the crossfires or the 5770 is really um, not that great anymore so I've just purchased it purchased a 570 at a GTX 570 about 200 pounds I don't know where I'm getting this money from but um, it's kind of a painful thing for me to do to see all that money just go away but anyway, hopefully within the next few days I'll have this uh, card and these graphics will be up to par and very uh, aesthetically appeasing to all of you people. <laughs> so anyway, that's that's a little news that I wanted to share with you guys. But then again, I think these graphics are sort of fine at the moment. So anyway, let's get on to the replay because I know you guys want me to talk about the replay rather than what's happening in my computer box. So okay, so I've got a, uh, a paper in front of me with highlighting some... Uh, some of the changes that were going about from, from uh, 2.602 and I'll focus on the engineers right now for example so the engineers when they get their flamethrowers I know don't, I don't have the flamethrowers out just yet but the uh, engineers when they get flamethrowers actually they get a suppression modifier that is increased so they go from 1 to 1.5 so they're basically easier to suppress when they have the flamethrowers I'm not exactly sure if that applies to uh, pioneers with flamethrowers Perhaps I need to check that, but um, I imagine it would. So we just have a bit of that going on. The, also, the riflemen, they have their veterancy sort of reduced in a way. They do not get their veterancy from bars and uh, stickies anymore. And if you weren't aware, they got about 5% bonus in 2.601 from each of those. Instead, the supplier 2 bonus XP has increased from 20% to 30%. So something to note, I think they want they want to make some balance changes because hardly anyone would go for supplier 2 and now that supplier 3 or supplier 2 has uh, an extra bonus on it, it might be more viable to get, especially if you go for a more heavy infantry strategy. Okay, so in this replay, Ryan is actually going for a infantry half-tracked strategy from the Kampfgruppe company. The structure. Um, now it's sort of funny because me and Ryan were basically alternating between Americans and PE and I was trying out these infantry half tracks all the time and pretty much I was losing all the time. It was sort of painful and the good thing about Ryan is that 
when he loses, he actually fights to the very end. When I start losing, I just drop when I recognize that there's no way for me to come back. So for example, if he has tanks and I have, I'm nowhere near to anti-tank. But anyway, so when I was playing the PE, I was trying out the infantry half track and I was losing a ton of time. So Ryan being the even better PE player, um, decided that he would try his own, um, own luck at using these clown cars. And um, well, I guess you guys will have to see what happens. But anyway, so he, at the moment he has two infantry half tracks out at the moment. He's just landed on one of my mines that I placed down with my engineers. And the thing that's sort of important, like we've been we, uh, me and Ryan were practicing a lot. The thing about um, when you're playing 1v1s so and just any game in general, it's basically a fuel race. And we both have to agree, yeah, it's a fuel race. So whoever could grab the fuel first, maintain it, and basically tech up faster to who could get tanks and such. And that holds very true in a lot of games. So basically what me and Ryan are trying to do is maintain our points. I'm trying to cap away at fuel points on the right hand side and left hand side. As they are both medium fuel points and the highest ones on the map. The other ones are just low fuel points. So something to keep aware of. And yeah, you just got to tech up before the uh, other opponent and try and beat him to the race. So the thing about Ryan and this strategy, he has two infantry half tracks, and like, and the half, half tracks are actually very good at killing units. Um, they do a lot of suppression. It's sort of like an MG, and they're very, very mobile, as you guys can see, because they're mounted on top of a, a half track body. And so they make very good use of. Uh, they make a very good use of a, um, a mobile MG, so to say. Lots of suppression. And very mobile, as they keep on stressing. Keep on stressing. The thing about the PE is that they have a very, very slow uh, rate of repair. Older units, older Panzer Grenadiers and such can repair uh, vehicles, but without their advanced repairability, they only have an initial very, very weak repairability, and so they repair their infantry half tracks very, There's very slowly. Now, this has become sort of a, a, I don't know, I suppose you could say a bottleneck in the strategy. Because when, as soon as your uh, infantry half tracks start getting damaged, then it takes a lot, a lot, a lot of time to repair them. And so that can put a very big strain on you capping points. And that's another thing as well. Panzer Grenadiers are, very, are not the fastest cappers in the world. They're actually one of the slowest. And so what he, what Ryan really has to depend on is using his Kettenkrad. Where is his Kettenkrad? His Kettenkrad to cap points because he's the faster... Uh, more capable unit to cap away. So the, these are the two bottlenecks, the repairing rate and the uh, rate at capturing points. But then again, all of these can be improved from field craft and advanced repairs. All upgrades that you can get from your structures. So everything to sort of note. But then again, this infantry hat track uh, strategy is sort of quite difficult to pull off. As you guys can see, there's infantry in the half track just trying to uh, <laughs> just look like a clown car. I'm actually I've actually got a few uh, riflemen squads out I've got four riflemen and I went for bars. I didn't go for stickies because um, At this point in the game, I'd rather spend my ammunition on on mines or even flamethrowers and You know stickies are sort of hard to pull off You need to get close to these infantry half tracks and when you got all that suppression coming down it might be a bit hard to do the bars very good damage um good against infantry, good against light armor, so they absolutely shred these infantry half-tracks, especially when they're nearby them. I've actually got a motor pool just now, uh, so I basically, this is the whole fuel race that I was uh, talking about. So basically, I had quite a few advantage, I had multiple fuel, po fuel points there, and so I was able to get the uh, motor pool up quite quickly in comparison to Ryan, who's still on his, well, just got his Panzer Jaeger command. So we gotta see what comes out of that. Probably an armored car, and definitely not a bad way to respond as well, because he obviously realizes that okay, maybe I have I have bars and I have multiple infantry squads. This might be sort of heavy infantry strategy. He might not be expecting me to have a motor pull out just yet, just yet. But um, but I do, <laughs> and that's one of the brilliant things. So when as soon as I get an M8 out or a T17. Anything he pulls out of the uh, armor, or out of the Panzer Jaeger command, or the Kampfgruppe company, is going to be basically countered by the T-17s. 
So it's no problem on that front right now. So we just have a bunch of action just going back and forth. So on the left hand side, we have it on the right hand side. And that's what we're just trying to do. Just trying to cycle your guys, reinforce them, send them back onto the field. And whoop de doo da day. And life goes on. <laughs> And so I'm just putting down a few mines just on the choke points, wherever I expect the uh, opponents to go for. And as you guys saw at this uh, place over here, the half track did crash into that mine. So mines are very, very effective. I keep on saying this in every single game. It's probably becoming kind of redundant. But then again, it is very important. Now, Ryan actually has uh, Panzer Shreks out on his uh, Panzer Grenadiers, and he has placed them in his infantry half tracks. Now, Ryan is a very good uh, Panzer Elite player, so he definitely knows what he, he needs to do in terms of teching up. And so I'm guessing he must be expecting that I would have some sort of uh, tanks coming out. And yes, I do have my T-17. Now, I actually prefer the T-17s over M8s. I know the M8s uh, have the ability to um, put down mines, and in general, they... I don't know, they're a bit uh, stronger, so to say. But the T-17s, I like them because the fire rates are usually fast, are quite fast. Uh, they're quite decent at taking out infantry, and as you guys can see, they do a decent amount of damage against light ATs as well. And so Ryan's taking some very heavy losses here. His armored car, which just came out, was taken out by, by my T-17 before he even managed to get a kill, I believe. And his infantry half-track, his clown car, was actually ripped to shreds by my uh, sort of blob maneuver of riflemen here. And I'm just being the brutal player that I am. This is, this is a funny thing about me and Ryan, um, when we're having these casual games, we do like to play as best as we can, and that's what we're trying to do. Now, I was a bit too bold with my T-17, I wanted to go in his base and take out what he had left, but I didn't actually realize these black Burlings are very, very good against the T-17s, maybe not the front armor, but especially against the back armor. If you guys saw that, the, the, the black Burling actually whipped half of its health almost instantly. Um, so definitely something I didn't in. know and something Field to take available. note of in the future. Definitely uh, do not point your light armored f uh, rear armor at the fl flag feelings. They're very, very good as you guys saw. Now Ryan is really on the back foot at the moment. He doesn't have anti-tank. He does a few, few Panzer Grenadier squads. But then again, he lost his infantry half track and he did lose his armored car. So as we see multiple wrecks on the field at the moment, and <laughs> this is just quite, kind of a little bit of havoc. A little rifleman gentleman just taking a uh, Panzer Shrek shot right to the gut, unfortunately falling down and losing his life. Kind of unfortunate, but at the same time just capping away. So I've just cut off Ryan here. He was actually capping this uh, fuel point because he's desperately needing fuel. Switch on over to Ryan. Uh, not much fuel income, 21. That's okay, but it's really not that much on uh, Longra. So I basically cut him off here, uh, place down the mine, keep on going. Use uh, another wrench in your squad to cap away at this point. Just making sure to uh, cut off your opponent, opponent when you can. Now, if we're talking about cutting off the right hand side, you can cut off your opponent by taking this point. And another thing you have to note is the middle center point because sometimes you might, it's a usual common idea if you take this point, then you'll totally cut them off. Uh, yes, that is true as long as this point is cut off as well. Sometimes people might be connected through the center point. And so it's always something to, interesting to uh, keep a note of. But as you guys can see, there's multiple, multiple, multiple uh, places where you can cut off your opponent. So here, 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 and right here. So basically every single manpower point, these little uh, plus three manpower points, is the cutoff point. So that's where you usually... Um, you can uh, cut off your opponent and deny them of resources. So Ryan is on the back foot at the moment. He does have his Panzer support command coming out. And he's getting a light AT half track because he obviously recognizes that I have a T-17 on the field. It's going to be a bit hard for his Panzer Shrek uh, little grenadiers to actually get close to the T-17. When the T-17 is such a mauler of infantry. As you guys can see, these uh, Panzer Shreks are trying to come behind. But when the T-17... Even when it's by itself, um, it can easily outrun the Panzer Shreks. The rifleman, especially with uh, rifleman support, it becomes uh, much too hard to uh, take out. As you guys can see, taking another Panzer Shrek loss, Ryan has basically no AT on the field at the moment. This is sort of unfortunate. Now, I'm going to have to actually apologize on uh, my behalf. <laughs> because I know I show the uh, games where uh, Ryan loses and I win. And... Like I said at the beginning of the replay, Ryan actually whooped my butt in um, 
quite a number of games before these uh, the these ones. And it's just because, you know, we were trying to practice, get used to 2.602. I'm also trying to get used to um, Panzer lead strategies, so the infantry half track. So they are definitely hard to pull off. I'm not exactly sure how uh, how a strategy will be pulled off with that. Um, I'd like someone, somebody, if they're an expert at the PE, PE2, maybe let me know how you would use your uh, infantry half tracks. What kind of strategy you could use it um, with them? Because it is definitely hard to pull off. They are kind of limited because um, as soon as the T17s come out, and even the bars, they can actually rip apart the uh, half tracks. <clears throat> Okay, so Ryan does have his light ATF track. He also has his tank buster heavy infantry. So these guys are really busters of tanks, as the, the, uh, the name implies. And we just have Ryan trying to recuperate his losses and capping away at what possible. Now I'm kind of iffy. I would, I could actually, I do have the manpower to move ahead and prevent Ryan from recapping his point. However, this light AT half track is really putting me off. I mean, as soon as I get near it, it's going to just start hitting me. And this is where I've actually forgotten to <laughs> talk about some t statistics. But, uh, okay, back to my little paper in front of me. The anti-tank half-track, uh, the Treadbreaker cost has increased from 40 ammunition to 50 ammunition. So basically that was a nerf. It's sort of harder to uh, use your Treadbreaker ability. Um, so Ryan, at the moment, he has only 35 ammunition. He can actually use the Treadbreakers on me. Um, if I did actually move in my T-17 with my uh, Rifleman, I could easily actually take out Ryan there. Uh, but then again, I was unsure. I was totally unsure how much ammunition Ryan had. But now looking back at it, considering how many guys of his were upgraded with uh, the, these weapons, the Gewehr, the MP-44, the Panzer Shrek, I should have probably realized that Ryan's actually going to be quite low on ammunition. Okay, so... Oh! I suppose we're going to be a bit off topic. <laughs> Back to the infantry half track. I just wanted to mention I've got this little point in front of in front of me. Accuracy versus light cover increased from 0.75 to 0.8. So basically, they are 5% more accurate against infantry with the yellow shield, and that is light cover. Now, as you guys can see, Ryan taking a lot of hits from my T17. Even far away, it can do a lot of damage. And Ryan just trying to respond and make me a bit afraid with his light AT half track. Obviously see that coming, so I need to get away from that. Let, now let's switch over back to me. I've gone for Armor Doctrine, and this is sort of an interesting choice. Ryan actually being quite a bugger, his <laughs> his lucky Panzer Shrek shot blew up one of my mines. Kind of unfortunate 25 ammunition loss there, but what can you do if that's what happens? That's sort of luck based, oh well. Now I have three T-17s. I went for Armor Doctrine just to capitalize on this, because I know Ryan only has hardly any fuel. He probably only has one AT half track. And basically, if I've got field, uh, field repairs and all this ammunition and all these T-17s, it's going to be just absolute havoc on Ryan. And he can even throw a, a tread breaker on me, it doesn't matter. I've got field repairs and I can instantly repair my T-17s. So Ryan is going down, he brought down another armored car. Not exactly what he needs, he needs more anti-tank, but I don't think he was expecting me to get more uh, T-17s. And now here comes the black feelings again. A uh, sort of interesting thing to note about the Panzer Elite is that uh, pre 2.602, the Flag Veerlings actually were issue. caught um, by default, used up three population of uh, the Panzer Elite population. Yep. And now it's reduced to zero, so they don't actually count for anything anymore, and that's actually the appropriate thing to do because the funny thing about the Panzer Elite is that they're quite restricted to their population. And now, I think an overall um, general buff that the PE got is a lot of their units actually had their population um, reduced. And I wish I actually wrote this down, but apparently it did. <laughs> now, let's see, the Kaveri 43. Suppressive volley fire now suppresses the target. Okay, so that's sort of interesting. Um, suppressive volley fire usually slowed down the um, opponents pre 2.602 now they actually slow them down and they also suppress them and the however okay that's a, that's a cool thing i suppose that's a buff but there's also a nerf the fire slow fire or slow duration has been reduced from 20 seconds to 5 seconds so if you guys remember 2.601 if you're ever slowed by a Vera 43 you would have noticed how annoying it would be that the slow duration would take so long giving the 
um, a put a DPE, such a great opportunity to kill your guys as they're retreating. Now it's only been reduced to it's been reduced to five seconds, so you have a big, much bigger chance of survivability. And so what I would actually recommend, if you're ever going to be suppressed like that, slowed, you might as well instantly retreat, just because you basically you keep your guys alive and you waste the PE ammunition on you as the pressing volley fire. Now five T17s. This is obviously too much for Ryan to handle. Now Ryan, this is what I mean. Ryan likes to stay to the very end of the game and do what he can. He went for his tank destroyer doctrine, and he does have his headser coming out. So I believe that's six hundred. Manpower? Yes, it's 600 manpower. And my 270 is obviously no match for the headset. I need to get out of there, and that is what I am doing. I obviously done a lot of damage already, but I'm not gonna keep the headset there any longer because the headset is definitely good enough at taking out my my uh, T17s. Now this is sort of unfortunate. I don't have really much to counter the T17 apart from the uh, M the anti tank gun, but actually. All this killing and all this destruction led me to have 5 CP and I unlocked the Pershing. Now I'm certain saving up for the Pershing. I'm pretty sure you guys can understand where this is going right now, but I think it's sort of funny to watch just what how uh, persistent Ryan is. He's obviously a very, very good player. Um, but you know, it's just sort of funny and uh, entertaining to watch these sort of things. Now Ryan's just landing into one of my mines, so I bet he wasn't expecting that. But I was trying to lure him into it and that's what happens. So whenever you're on the retreat, what you want to do is always have mines on the on the front, on uh, near your opponent's battle or your opponent's territory. By doing so, whenever you have to retreat or you know just fall back a bit, you can always lead your opponent onto some mines, and that's what I done. Now he has a heavily destroyed engine or uh, damage engine. Now he can't really get anywhere, and I've also got another mine set up over here. So if Ryan tries to keep on chasing me down this path, he would crash into another one, and most likely his engine would be totally destroyed and he'd be in very, very bad position. Now I suppose one of the things I could have done with my T-17s is throw on a phosphorus round, white phosphorus rounds for 50 ammunition on the Hetzer. And maybe that would have done a good job at uh, stunning it and then I could flank with the other ones around the Hetzer and take it out. I'm not sure how these uh, T-17s do in terms of anti or uh, penetration on the rear armor of the Hetzer. But then again, you know, it's all these, always these things to consider. Maybe I should have done that. Now, I do have the Pershing on the field. 800 manpower. That has been reduced from 900 to 800. Something to keep a note of. So they're 100 manpower cheaper. Perhaps a good thing as well. And here we go. So Hetzer versus Pershing. Bam! <laughs> the Hetzer is gone. Ryan bringing out a number Hetzer in sort of desperation. What kind of match will this do against the Pershing? And now that was what I call a fail shot. That is a total absolute miss. I can't believe how off that Pershing shot was on Ryan's Hetzer. So instant penetration of the front armor. The Hetzer's doing actually a very good job at penetrating my front armor as well. Very surprising. As you guys can see, these deflecting shots coming off. It's a match between the Hetzer and the Pershing. Now you usually think the Pershing would do a very good job, and the Pershing is doing a very good job of penetration, as you guys can see. But then again, Ryan's still doing quite a bit of damage. One little Hetzer doing quite a bit of damage against the Pershing. And now I'm just being a sneaky little bugger and just moving into Ryan's base a little. Obviously this is near the end of the game, but Ryan is just, uh, we're just having a little bit of fun. I'm putting down a bit of mines just in case Ryan gets uh, any more uh, Hetzers. They'll just crash instantly into the uh, mines. So I'll just speed this up because it's near the end of the game. And come on, come on, come on. And I'm just Ryan saying good game, I'm saying good game as well. And there we go, that's the end of the replay. Now, okay, this is obviously not the best of games. Um, it's just a little casual match. One of the first uh, 2.602 replays out there. And so it's just here to introduce you guys to what to expect and a little bit of information. I do believe I might have... Oh no, I went over all the points. All those points were important, except maybe the T17. The Vet 1 health bonus has been reduced from 175 to 50 um, health, and their health has increased, their initial health, from 175 to 265. So that is our base. Um, so, quite interesting things to note. Anyway, it's uh, it's very good to have a, to have a person to play with. Um, 
games frequently. So Ryan's a very good player, so we like to play games quite frequently and often. Um, and it's just very nice because you sort of get to know the strategies, how your opponent plays, and it's also, also very good strat um, very good practicing. So anyway, guys, I hope to get some more 2.602 replays out. I might actually wait until my new graphics card comes out until I do that. But then again, I could do it and uh, do one in the meantime. But anyway, until then, this is Krebs Coho wishing you guys all a very good day. See you guys later.